What's up guys and welcome to another draw along with me. Today's draw along with me is the translucent effect. Now I've had this requested numerous times since I did the original design on this. So today I'm eventually getting round to doing the tutorial on it. This tutorial is a fairly long one. There's a lot of masking, a lot of selections and a lot of applications of masks as well. So it can be a little bit confusing, but hopefully I've done a good enough job of explaining everything as I've gone. So try and keep up. If you don't or you get lost, just go back a couple of steps because a lot of this repeats itself as we go. As always, there's a link to the palette in the description. So you'll be able to follow along with the exact same colors I've used today. Just before we get started with today's tutorial, if you're also a keen artist, then the folks over at Paperlike have got you covered. You can enjoy the sound and the feel of a Paperlike texture on your screen when you're drawing. If you're interested in purchasing your own paper light screen protector, there'll be a link down in the description. So we'll get started by creating our canvas. So we'll come up to the plus icon and tap on the plus for the new canvas. And as always, my canvas size is 2,500 by 2,500 and my DPI is set to 300. So now we've got our canvas. As always, there's a link in the description to the palette we're gonna use for today. And we've got a bunch of different variations on purples, pinks, reds, oranges, and yellows. And let's get started by changing our background color. That needs to be set to black. So from our layers, you simply tap on the background color. And then on this picker wheel, simply double tap at the bottom and that will turn it to black and hit done. We need to create a circle, which will be the mask for the majority of the layers in this design. And to do so, we're gonna to go to our brush library, we're going to go to our calligraphy brush section and pick the monoline. And on the new layer one, we're going to simply just draw a circle. And to do this, you can just draw a circle, make sure it links up at the top, hold your pen at the end, which will create an eclipse. But if you pop your finger on the screen, it will create a perfect circle and you can scale it up to as big or as small you want. And then you can drag your color in from the top so you don't have to spend some time filling that in and we're just going to position this in the middle using the cursor tool and make sure we hit the orange lines and to make sure you can do that just turn on snapping and you'll see the orange lines so this is set to our guide circle now so every layer that we create going forward will be clipped to this circle i'm actually just going to go to our color picker and i'm just going to pick a dark gray uh, this isn't necessary for the design, but it's just so that we can see the shape, but then also see the shapes that we're going to draw within it as well. And then we are going to go to our layers and we're going to create a new layer and we're going to make sure that this one is clipped to the circle. If you're new to Procreate, then clipping means that you cannot draw outside the boundaries of the layer that your layer is clipped to. So I can't draw in this space here because there's technically no pixels. We can only draw within the boundaries of the layer that we're clipped to. So let's just delete that and do that again. So we'll create a new layer. I'm gonna tap on it and select clipping mask. And we need to get started by creating the body of the fish. And then we can work on the rest of the layers afterwards. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna come from this sort of edge over here and we're gonna create sort of an S shape, which will come across like so. And then we can build all the other ones off of that. So I'm gonna get started now with that. Something along those lines is fine. And then we can go all the way around the outside and then link up at the top and bring in our color. Now this may take a few attempts just to try and get the particular shape of the fish that you want, but I'm relatively happy with that one. So I'm gonna to continue to move on. So with all these layers, we need to see all the layers through it as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop this percentage down just while we're building up all our shapes and we're gonna drop it down to say 17%. And it's just so that we can see, as I said, the other layers that we're gonna to continue to draw. Now we've got the body of the fish, we're now gonna get started on the tail. And to do so, we're gonna to go to our layers. We're gonna create a new layer. We're gonna make sure this is also a clipping mask. And then we are gonna, with the monoline brush still, we're gonna draw somewhat of an arc and then hold your pen at the end and you'll be able to adjust this arc freely like so. And you can start to position it how you want it like so. And we need to consider this space here because that'll be part of the tail that we're gonna duplicate a few times. Now, I've started relatively high, but in a moment I'm gonna rotate. Um, so I need to just consider this space for now. I'm gonna leave that there 
and then I'm going to go all the way around the outside edge here and link up my shape and drag my colour in. And as I mentioned, I'm just going to rotate mine a little bit as it wasn't quite right in terms of its flick towards the bottom. So now we've got the shape of this fin. Um, what I'm going to quickly do, because there's some excess shape around the outside here, we just need to make sure that that's fully clipped away. Now some of this you won't see the effects of, but it's just a little tidy up measure before we go any further. So if I was to unclip this layer, for example, you can see there's a lot of excess that we're not using. So what I want to do is actually remove that. So I've unclipped this layer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the layer of the circle that's our bottom layer and you're going to tap on the layer and hit select so what that's done is it's selected the pixels of the circle and then we're going to go to our little tail we created and we're going to tap on it and select the option mask and then all you want to do then is just pinch the two together like so and now even though that's not clipped it's got the perfect same shape to the circle it's just a little tidy up measure to make sure as we go forward everything is correct. And so now we can go back to clipping mask and make sure it is exactly that. And the same again, we're gonna drop this down to 17% or around that mark, just very light so that you can still see the shape because it's these parts here that we're quite interested in because they will overlap one another and that's when we can start to put in the little frosted effect later on in the design. So we're gonna, we're gonna swipe our tail layer to the left and select duplicate and then we're going to make sure we go back to our layers and just select the new layer so there's only one blue layer selected and then we're going to go to our cursor and we're going to rotate and we're going to position so that this point up here pretty much starts from the same point as the tail that we had but then down here we get a nice little flick and that's probably a bit too much so i'm going to end up rotating mine roughly around about eight to nine percent so we get a little bit of a separation here, but it all links up to that point. Let's just rotate that to 8%. So again, this point here just needs to go from the original point, and then this one here, because of the rotation, will flick outwards, like so. So if I zoom in, you can see they both relatively closely come from the same point. So that's two out of the three sort of fin parts of the tail, and then we're just gonna go to our layers again, and repeat the process. We're gonna duplicate that last layer we used. Make sure that just that layer is selected and we're gonna to go to our cursor. And again, rotate at the same percentage, uh, sorry, degrees to the left that you did previously. So this is 8%. And again, make sure this point up here is relatively close to the start point. And then what we'll end up with now, if I stop there, we've got a lovely little flick of the tail that's making its way around the circle. And all of these layers, you can start to see the buildup of them. This will be quite useful for our frosted effect later on in the design. So now we've got our tail and our body of our fish, we can start to work on the fin here and then the, the other fin on the other side of the fish that we can't fully see. So with our layers, we'll just create one at the top and we'll make sure that again, it's just a clipping layer just so everything's nice and tidy. And we're going to go to our brushes to continue to use the monoline brush. And all we're going to draw is from a point, we're going to make that a bit smaller. We're going to drop that down to around about 15%. Now from this point, we're going to create somewhat of a teardrop effect like so. And then we're going to drag our color in like that. You could spend some time now going around the edges if you wanted to really uh, adjust the shape of it, but I'm pretty happy with that. The only thing I'm going to do is rotate mine so it's got a little bit more of a backwards direction to it. So that's the front fin and again we just need to drop this down to 17% or around that so we can just see through for the moment and make sure we can see everything and how our layers are slowly building up. And we want to then use the same layer but we want to use it for the fin on the other side of the fish so we're going to swipe this layer to the left and select duplicate. And because of the way the layers need to work, you need to drag this underneath the body of the fish, like so, and then use your cursor and then drag it across with the uniform option selected. Just make it a little bit smaller because it's a little bit further away. Maybe rotate it a couple of degrees as well, but make it a bit smaller, like so, and like that. 
So that's the fin on the other side of the fish. And then the final touch is we just need to erase a small eye circle here for the fish and then add in the final fin over the top. So for the body of the fish, we're going to go to this layer here. Now there's one easy way you could do this. You could simply go to your mask and then create a mask and erase a circle. Or you could simply go to a razor and draw a circle like so. Make it as big or as small as you wish. Like that. And then simply erase everything inside that as well. This is kind of the simple option of doing this. I want to try and make sure we save some time where possible. So I've just erased from the fish body layer the eye from there as well. Now, just as we did earlier on in the design for the fin down here, we just need to do a quick tidy up on this fish layer as well without unclipping this so you can see there's a lot of excess stuff around the outside and you can somewhat see that from my layer here. Uh, same process, we just need to simply tap on the circle, select the shape, which will then select the circle, go back to our fish, tap on it and select mask, which will then mask the fish actual layer to the circle shape as well, and then just pinch it, which will apply the layer mask. So that keeps things nice and tidy again later on, which will be a lot easier for us. Now what we're going to do is just quickly add in the extra sort of uh, fin that lives across the top of the fish that makes its way down its spine and for this what we're going to do is we're just going to go to the very top fin layer we created down here for the tail and swipe it to the left and select duplicate and then for this layer i'm just going to drag it all the way to the top and i'm going to unclip it for a second so it's not clipped to the boundaries of that circle i'm going to go to our cursor and we're going to rotate slightly like that and then start to position this and reuse this basically where we can sort of save a little bit of time. So I've just scaled it down a little bit. And if I zoom in, you can start to see I've got like the arc coming over here towards like the top of the eye almost, and then down the back as well. So you could drag that out. You don't want to make it too big though, because then this will be far too tall and stick out too far. Now I'm happy with that. The only thing we need to do is just adjust the shape slightly. So you can see the boundary of the extra layer I created. The only thing I want to do is just sort of blunt off this edge here and then we can start getting cracking on our translucent effect so you can see i've just with the eraser just erasing like a straight ish line like so the only thing you could then do is maybe make this a little bit smaller maybe take a little bit out but it may add a little something later on the only thing i will do is sort of come over here with the eraser and draw an arc hold your pen down because you can use this with the eraser as well and I will just erase a small part of it like so and then we'll get rid of this as well so if you didn't you see that all we're doing is just erasing from the layer of the, uh, the back fin that we've created there so now we've got all of our shapes that we would need to start creating this particular design and what we can start to do is also unclip everything from the circle because the circle at the bottom is not necessary now and because we did all of our neat and tidiness earlier on, if I unclip this fin here, everything above will also unclip. And we can simply swipe that away and hit delete. And all of our layers are still magically shaped to the circle that we originally had. So now we've got all of our shapes, we can start to progress with the filling in of the colors. And then there's a lot to do in terms of masking and sh selecting shapes and whatnot. Uh, but it's quite a repetitive process so once we do it the first time it should be pretty obvious what to do then for the rest of the layers as well so with all of our layers now we want to start filling them in and creating uh, colored variations on them so let's start with this very top layer in our layers which is this one up here we're going to go to our opacity and turn it all the way up and now you can see the shape that we're working with we're going to add a new layer above it and we're going to tap on it and use the option clipping mask so now we're clipping anything we draw on this layer to just this fin and we're going to get started with the colors so we're going to go to our airbrush section of our brush library and use the soft brush and then from our palette we can start to mix around some of the colors so what i want for my design is i want from the right hand side 
really to be like the purple pinks that fade into red and then fade into orange and yellow. So that sort of gra gradual color gradient from right to left. So this fin at the top now, on this new layer, we're gonna go to our brush library and select the soft brush. And then we're gonna go to our palette. And based on what I just said there, really this right hand side here should start off pink and then fade into red and then into orange. So I'm gonna make my brush fairly large at around about 30%. And I'm gonna fill in the whole thing pink. And then what we can do is we can go to our colors and I selected this color here. I'm gonna go for this red now. And then starting from the left hand side, just in a circular motion, slowly fade that up towards the pink. So you can see there's a little gradual color shift there. And then we've got the orange as well, which I'm gonna add in this corner and fade into the red. And then you could grab the yellow and maybe just add a little touch of that, like so. Now I'm using the strongest color variation on this, but there are more sort of toned down variations on the color if you want to. I wanna try the much brighter ones, but there's toned down versions should you want to. The only thing I will grab is the purple now and just add a little bit just on this very edge, just a tiny touch. So it goes from purple to pink, to red to orange, to a little bit of yellow. Now that layer's done. What we can do is we can, we've got the color layer above. What we wanna do is with the white layer underneath, this is where we kind of need to stay switched on and with the different effects that we're doing. We need to double tap in our color wheel and select black. So our little color picker up here is, and then on the layer underneath the color we just created, drop the color in. Now you won't see any change, but the layer underneath, for example, if I turn that off is now black and we need that for later on in the design. And then what we need to do is before we move on to the next part of the body of the fish is we need to tap on this layer and use the option select, which is now selected the pixels of that particular area. We need to go up to our color layer we need to tap on it and we need to select mask. And then what we need to do is tap on the mask and select invert. Now it will somewhat disappear, but it's still there ready for us to do the effect that we need to do later on when we come to it. So that's the top layer done. And we could turn this off if we wanted to now so we can focus on the rest of it. And we'll come back to layer three later on. So now we'll move down to layer six and we're gonna do the same process over again. We're gonna turn the opacity up to 100% so we can see the shape that we're drawing in. We can create a new layer. We're gonna tap on that layer and use the option clipping mask. And now we're just gonna color in how we want it to look. I'm gonna to go to our colors. And for this, I kind of want it to be quite purpley pink. And I'm still using the soft airbrush. You fill in the whole color first, and that's easier for you to then start to gradually fade out some extra colors like so and then maybe some red, like so. And then we should end up with that little little gradient effect. And then you could go in and maybe add in a little bit of yellow on the underside here, like that. And then same process again, we need to tap on layer six. We need to go to our color picker and select black. We need to drag the color into layer six and then that will now be black. I'm saying layer six because mine's named as layer six. You will need to remember what your layers are numbered as, but they may well match up to mine. It's just so that when you can see my screen, you know what layer I'm referring to. So now this color layer above that we created, we need to do the same process again. We need to tap on the fin itself and select the option select. We need to go back to our layers and we need to go on to the color layer now and select mask. So what that initially does is it masks it to the shape, but then when we go to invert, it hides anything in that shape and it's technically still there above, but because it's clipped, you can't see it. So that's the fin now done and we can continue on. And you can see we will literally start to build up the exact same process over and over again throughout all of these layers. So we're gonna turn this layer off and then we're gonna make our way down to the next one. And if we go to our opacity and turn it all the way up, we can see we're working with the furthest part of the fin tail at the bottom here. And we can start to fill that in with the colors we want as well. So we're gonna to go to our layers, we're gonna create another new layer, tap on that and select clipping mask and it will clip it to the tail, so like so. And then again, we're gonna to go to our airbrush and our colors 
and we are just gonna color in how we want it. So again, I'm working on the concept that the purple is over here on the right hand side. I'm gonna make my brush very large at this point at 40%. So I'm gonna start with the purple and then with the colors, I'm just gonna make my way backwards. So what you can do is don't press too hard straight away. If I press really hard straight away, we get a very sort of somewhat harshish graduation. But if you go lightly and then build it up, you'll end up with a nice soft, lovely gradient. Like so. so we've got a bit of purple over here, fades into the pink. I'm then gonna grab the other pink as well, because it's really punchy. And then we're gonna go to red, and I'm just making my way down this row of the colors, because this fin covers the whole design from left to right. And then we're gonna grab the orange. And then we're gonna grab the yellow, like so a lovely little gradient here with all the different colors and similar process we're going to go to our layer of the fin we're going to go to our color picker and select black by double tapping and it will towards the bottom half and it will clip to black we're going to go to our layer and we're going to drop in the black color then you'll see on your laser that that's now changed and you tap on that and use the option select which is selected the pixels of that area and we need to mask the layer above so we go to our colors that we just created and use the option mask and then tap on the mask and use invert. So every every single different object we create for the fish, we're doing the same and similar process every time. This is partly why I put the disclaimer at the beginning because there's a lot of layers, a lot of masking and a lot of selections that if you stay on track with, you'll end up with this effect super easy. So we're gonna turn that layer off as well so we can see what's left. So I just tapped on the black tail there and now I'm going to go on to the next one and we're going to go all the way up to the top and select 100% opacity and then we can get cracking on this one. And because this we've already done it quite similarly above, I'm going to do the same process. I'm going to grab the purple with my airbrush and make sure we create a new layer and clip it to the tail fin. And on that new layer, we're going to color him. We're going to grab our colors and then make our way down this exactly the same process as we did before. Now you could vary this up a little bit if you wanted to. You don't have to use all the colors either. You could just do the purple through to the pinks. Um, that would do the exact same effect and also change yours up slightly from the rest of the design. So with this one, I've gone in with a little bit less red and I've added in more orange and yellow. Again, yours will vary, so don't worry about sort of keeping up with the colors that I'm sort of using. You can see the colors from this point now and maybe match up if you really wanted to keep it as accurate as possible to mine. And then again, we are gonna tap on the layer. We're gonna to go to our colors and double tap, select black, drop in the black color, which is filled in the original shape black now. We're gonna tap on it and we're gonna select the option select. We're gonna to go to our layers and we're gonna tap on the clipping mask of all the colors and use the option mask. And then we're gonna tap on that mask and we're gonna use the option invert and then turn the original layer off. So fingers crossed you kept up with that. That was a bit quicker this time um, as the process is now just repeating itself. So next layer down in the, the white layers, we're going same process, make it as large as we can in terms of its opacity up to 100%. We're gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna tap on that and select the option clipping mask. And then we're gonna to go to our colors and start the process again. And so I'm starting with purple to fill the whole thing in. And then I'm gonna grab the, the next purple down and make my way from really from left to right. And then again with the pinks. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of red in here and that's kind of it for this one. I'm gonna leave this one slightly different where it's more the, the pinks and reds through to the purple, not so much orange in there. Um, we can potentially go in at a later date if we want to and make that change. And then we're gonna go and do the same process. Tap on the layer that we were drawing within, go to our color picker and double tap on black and drop that in. You can see that that now changed to black then we're gonna tap on that layer and use the option select. So we've selected the pixels of that shape. 
we're going to go to our clipping mask and use the option of mask and then we need to tap on the mask layer that was just created and use the option invert like so and we've only got two more layers now to create this process fully from start to finish so earlier on when i uh, clipped the body of the fish to the circle i didn't turn its opacity up that's not a problem we can easily you can see it's set to 100 percent but it's actually technically still transparent and all you can do is simply swipe this to the left swipe it to the left and then that creates three versions and you can pinch those together if you made the same mistake i did and then again you just duplicate it and duplicate it and duplicate it and then maybe pinch them together and what you're essentially doing here is just building up the opacity of the fish until you get a nice solid white color like so and i'll just do that one more time and pinch those together so now i've got my shape back so now we'll do the same process we will go to create a new layer we're going to tap on that layer and use the option clipping mask and we're going to go to our colors and we're going to fill it in now because again the fish covers the majority of the design you want to start with what your color was on the right hand side which will be purple and then from the left start to build up your colors how you want them so similar process as we've done before i'm going to start to bring in the different pinks and then the much more punchier pink then i'm going to switch to the red like so and then the orange I'll maybe bring the orange a bit further down and then the final bit is some yellow in there as well which gives a nice glow to it and then same as before we go to our fish layer and we go to our color picker and double tap on black drop in the black color so you can see now the body of the fish has changed to black and then we tap on it and use the option select and then we go to our color layer that we created and we use the option mask and then we tap on the mask and we invert so you see this process again continue and continue to repeat itself and we've only got one more layer left so we'll turn off the fish for the moment so we can see the final layer which is the fin that's in the very background of the fish design and we're going to go to our opacity make sure it's turned all the way up to the top create a new layer that will then clip to the fin and we're going to go to our brushes and our colors sorry and then we're just going to color it in with the colors we want i'm going to go for purple fully and then maybe just go straight into the pink for this one so it's a bit different like so and then maybe just leave it like that i quite like that so i'm going to go to my layers same process the fin itself needs to be changed to black so we're going to go to our colors and double tap on black and drop the color in and then we're going to select the shape of the fin by tapping on the layer and using select and then we're going to go to our color layer tap on it and mask it and then we're going to tap on the mask and invert it and that is all of our layers now colored in masked as well as everything we would need clipped as well to the shapes so now we can start get working on bringing the color back in and how you go about doing that. So you want to scroll up your layers to the very top and we want to start on the very top layer, which is the outer sort of fin that goes down the back of the fish. So we're going to go to our layers. We turned it off initially. So you need to make sure that the very top layer here is turned back on. And then we're going to go to our layer mask. And this is where you can see the effect come in. We are going to go to our adjustments and we're going to go to Gaussian Blur. And you need to make sure you are on the mask, not on the clipping layer, on the actual mask. And go to Gaussian Blur and Layer. And then from left to right, you can start to bring the colour in like so. So you can go all the way in and maybe just leave a little bit of darkness in the middle. Or you can do it really small and then just have a, a very small glow around the outside for my design i am going to go with roughly 17 percent. it brings enough color in but we can always go in and add some more as well afterwards so you start to see we've brought that color all in from the outside and essentially what we've done is we've just blurred out the layer mask so this middle section will be cut out but we've just blurred the edge around it 
It took me a little while to work this out when I saw the design initially, but 17% is what we're gonna go with, 17 and a half. And then you simply just tap on your adjustments and we've brought all that color in and it looks really cool. So when we go back to our layers now, what we can do is we need to do a, a series of masking application and then removing the mask and then adding new masks. So I'll show you what I mean by that is, we blurred this layer mask out and what we need to do is apply it. So you simply pinch it like so. And then what we need to do is we've got a dark section here. You can see slightly in the layer that's been cut out of our colors, which is what we've achieved here. And then just for tidiness, we need to go into our layer underneath, tap on it and use the option select again. And then we go back to our color layer we tap on it and we use the option mask, which again has masked the design just to the shape. Then straight away, we simply pinch like so. And then if you unclip that layer now, and you can turn off the, the layer underneath, this layer here now is completely done. We've only got the outside glow. The middle is completely transparent. And now when we do the next layer below, and the next layer below that, you'll start to see the buildup of the effect. Now, I wanna just pause for a second, just, just very quickly, just explain what we did there. By erasing the mask initially of the blurred bit in the center, we applied it, which means the mask can't be changed afterwards. And that's fine because that's what we needed for this particular effect. So we applied the mask that got rid of the middle part. And again, that's just simply applying the mask to the layer permanently. And then what we did was we took the selection of the shape as well, and then masked this again to it, and then applied that mask straight away by pinching, which meant everything outside of this shape also was cut out permanently. And so what we ended up with was just a layer with the glow around it, and then inside here is also transparent as well. So let's carry on with the rest of them and you'll see the process repeat again, just like we did with these other layers on how you can build up this effect. So the next layer down, if we turn it on over here, is actually the fin, which is down here somewhere. So what we need to do is, we need to go to our layer mask, which is this layer here, and you need to make sure that the layer we're about to work on is now turned back on. Like so, you won't see it on the canvas, but you'll see it momentarily. So make sure it's turned back on. We need to go to the layer mask of the color layer. We need to go to our adjustments, and then again, Gaussian blur, select the option layer, and then from left to right, bring the color back in and go up to the same percentage you did for the very top one. So mine was 17 and a half percent. It keeps things nice and consistent. You could maybe change it up if you really wanted to, but for consistency, I'm gonna keep it the same percentage. 17 and a half percent, like so. And we've nicely brought in the color of the little fin here on the side. And we're gonna, tap on our adjustments because we're done with that. And then the same process, what we've done is you can see this dark section here now, if I pinch this down, will be erased from the color and you can ever so slightly see that from the tip of my pen. Now what we're gonna do is we want to erase from this layer all the excess color that's all the way on the outside. So what we do is we select the fin, we select the option select, and then we go back to layer of our colors, We mask it, which now is going to get rid of all the excess stuff that's in the black sections here. And as, as before, you pinch straight away. And what we've done is you can see now from the layer that all we're left with is the fin. We can actually tap on this and unclip it. And that layer is now done. And we can turn off the black shape that we used before. So we've got two layers now that have had the inside cut out as well as the excess around the outside also cut out. And we'll continue down and every layer we add here will build up this effect. So now we need to go down to the next layer. We need to turn on that layer and then we need to go to our layer mask of the color layer and go to Gaussian blur layer and bring from left to right the color back in up to the percentage we decided upon. So I've got about 17% there like so. And then same process, we're going to pinch this down to apply the mask. We're going to tap on the shape to select the shape of it. We're then going to go back to our color layer, 
apply the mask and then pinch like so and then we end up with just that shape with, with the glow and you tap on this and unclip it now because it's not needed as well as turn that layer off same process as we did before and so we'll do that over again for all the rest of it i won't speed this up or cut to that point because it's kind of important to understand the constant repetition and then the next time you do your own design in this style it will just be like muscle memory to you on this next layer you simply turn on the layer we go back to our layer mask of the color layer we go across to adjustments and select gaussian blur and then the layer variation and again from left to right bring that color in up to the percentage you decided upon 17.8 on this one tap adjustments and that's now done same process we then need to pinch the mask to the color layer like so and then we need to apply a new mask by tapping on the shape that we want so the, sh the shape that we're drawing in select the option select go back to the color layer tap on it and use the option mask and then pinch those two together tap on the layer and select clipping mask turned off and turn off that shape and you can already start to see this is how these are all starting to make their way you know layer on top of one another so same process let's go back down to layer underneath and make sure that's also turned on which it already is and then we're going to go to our layer mask we're going to go to adjustments and go to gaussian blur and layer and from left to right bring that color back in like so 17 and a half tap on adjustments and then same as before we pinch to apply the mask we select the shape of the object that we initially created we go back to our color layer and mask it to that shape one more time and then we pinch those two together to apply that last effect and then we tap on the layer and turn off clipping mask and turn off the original shape and now we've got our lovely tail of our fish all the different layers and we can go in shortly and start blurring out bits and bobs in there to give that nice frosted effect and we've got just two layers for this effect to continue on with so we've got the body of the fish so we turn that layer on and go back to our layer mask of the color layer we go to adjustments and gaussian blur and select layer and then from left to right we just bring that color back in and go up to the same percentage if not slightly more on the body of the fish, merely because it's such a, a, a thick sort of object here, you kind of need it to be a little bit more punchy than the rest. So maybe up to around about 30% I'm gonna leave that at. And tap on the adjustments. So all these colors now are starting to really pop together and you'll see how I go about adding the other effects shortly. And then same as before, we pinch to apply the mask of the blurring that we just did. We then select the shape of the object we initially created. We mask our color layer again to that shape and then a pinch to apply it one more time. Unclip, turn the original layer underneath oop, off like so, and that's done as well. And then the final layer we've got to do this on is the fin in the background so again make sure the original layer is turned on which mine already is we go back to our color layer and the mask for it we go up to the top we select gaussian blur layer and then from left to right bring that color back in 17 and a half percent is good for me then we go back to our layers we pinch on the layer to apply it we select the original shape of the object by tapping on it and selecting select. We go back to our color layer, we tap on it and select the option mask. And then we pinch that down one more time and then turn that clipping off, turn off the original layer. And we have all the layers that we need now with the color effect on for this particular style. So everything at the moment now is completely translucent in terms of it's just straight through there's no like frosted effect or blurring where the blurring creates a level of depth to it at the moment for example you can see the body of this fish quite easily and it's quite well defined but in reality you wouldn't be able to see that so well 
So for this effect now to really pop, you've got to start going back in and applying little areas of blurring, which will really bring everything together. So what to do with this, you start at the very bottom of all your layers and you go to the color layer that we created. So this one, I'm actually now working on the fin that we, we just added the effect to. And what we need to do is to start blurring out bits of it where there's layers above. So in reality, what that means is because this layer is right at the very bottom, you wouldn't see this top section of it so well because that's the body of the fish. And you wouldn't see this section here because one, that's also behind the body of the fish. But this part here is also behind this fin. So what we need to do is go back in and blur things out. So on this layer for this fin right in the background, we're going to go to our adjustments and blur but we're going to select the pencil variation now the pencil variation is really nice because you can go in and blur out just bits and bobs that you don't that you want to blur out so i'm going to bring my brush down to around about six or five percent and i'm going to start just blurring out parts that would sit in the distance a bit more so i'm trying to stay within the, the lines here of the body of the fish as well as here where we've got the fin as well so what we've ended up doing there my brush uh, is set to again five percent and the gauge and blur is set to sixty percent if we zoom out now the only thing that has a solid shape to it because that's the only thing we should technically see is this part of the fin and now if we replicate that effect with the rest of the design it'll all come together nicely so now if we go to our layers and we look at what the shape above is in terms of the layers, it's the body of the fish. Now the only thing we would need to blur here, because there's only one layer technically above it, is this fin here. And we're going to just blur out this line here of the body. So again, we go to our fish layer, we go to Gaussian Blur and select Pencil, and in this little part here, we need to blur this line out, we need to frost it out and just up and down motion to blur that line out. It's still somewhat there, but it's blurred out because you shouldn't see a solid sharp line and you can go back in and really blur it out to the level that you're happy with, like so. And let's continue up our layers then and continue to work out which layers we need to blur out. So the easy way to do so is just turn this on and off. Now this part of the tail is actually the closest part to us. So if I just turn that off again, you can start to see which parts of that we would see. But because it's the closest layer to us, these two lines here need to be blurred, but they're on other layers. So in reality, there's nothing we need to blur on this particular layer other than up here behind the body of the fish, this line here. So on this layer, I'm gonna to go to my Adjustments in Gauge and Blur and select Pencil. And then I'm just gonna blur, blur out this line here that sits in the body of the fish. And we're probably gonna have to repeat that for every part of this tail. And then when we go to our layers, we go up to the next color layer, turn it on and off. You can work out what you need to blur out. And for me, the only thing we need to do, we need to blur out anything that sits in this part here and that will be it, as well as the same part up here. So we'll go to our Gaussian Blur, we'll go to Pencil, and remember we're working on the middle one here, so you can you know watch the lines where they go, and you can blur this out here like so, because this part of the, the tail's sitting behind this one. So that's good, we can blur that out like so, and then if we come up here, we can see the line, follow the line of this one. So it goes all the way up here like so. And then you just blur anything out up here like that. Now we're done with that one. We can go to the next color layer, which is the other fin. So I've turned that on and off. We've got a lot to blur out on this line really and up in the body of the fish. So go to your adjustments, go to Gaussian Blur and then Pencil again. And remember, we're working on this one here. So just follow the lines as, as they are. I 
I'll just turn that off. So let's go back and go Guardian Blur and Pencil. And just blur anything out that you shouldn't be able to really see, which is this whole line here up until this here, because that is actually visible. So just following our line where it would have gone, it goes all the way up into here and we blur it out like so. And now that's really starting to come together in terms of this is quite obviously now the layer in front because everything you're seeing through it is being blurred out. And then likewise, that's the next layer and then that's the next layer. So we end up with the nice sharp edges of the things you can see, but anything you see through one layer is now blurred out. So there's only a few little things now we need to adjust, which would be up here, which I believe is coming up shortly as a layer. So next layer in terms of how we've got them stacked is the fin. There's nothing we need to blur out here because there's nothing that's in front of it. So we can move on to the very top layer, which is the very top fin. And again, same process. We go to our Gaussian blur and then pencil. And the only part we need to blur out is this line here, like so. So we'll go, go in and blur that out like that. Because again, you shouldn't really be able to see this. It's just that top edge that you would see. And now we have everything blurred out. We can go in and start to add little bits of highlight. Now there's only one thing I've just spotted is this line here needs to be blurred up here. So what we'll do is we're gonna go back to our layers and make sure we find it, which is this one here. And I just remembered this is nice and sharp, which is great, but this part here shouldn't be very sharp because it's hidden through the fish. So I'm gonna go back to my adjustments and go to Gaussian Blur and Pencil. And then I'm just gonna blur this out like so. Perfect. So that's nicely blurred out. So apologies for that. Just missed that last bit. Awesome. So now what we can do is we could go in and start to add some highlights. You could leave it like this. It looks pretty cool as it is, but you can go in and start to add some different highlights with white and you know really flush out certain areas that are brighter than the other. So we're gonna go to our layers and we're gonna go to first off this fish. I wanna make sure this front end of the fish is made nice and bright. This is why we kept these original layers because these layers here now are gonna act as masks for all of the different sort of extra bits and bobs we're gonna add in. So I'm gonna create a new layer and I don't need to clip it. The only thing I need to do is just select the shape of the initial shape we created for the fish body. Go back to our layer, tap on it and then select mask and then tap on layer underneath, turn off that. And now we've got a layer that's just masked to the body of the fish and I can start to go in and add some extra color. So for example, I can go to the purple I can go to my soft airbrush, make this fairly large at say 24% and just add in some extra color. So immediately you can see what it is we've done there. If I, that was what it looked like before and that is what it looked like afterwards. And you can just start to, you know, really add in some extra color, but just be very, you don't need to be very generous with it. Just, just very light extra bits of color. The body of the fish is the biggest part so it kind of needs the most color really and then the same again you can sort of make your way down the colors if you wanted to really flush out some more pinks like that go back and then flush out some more of the red and i'm being super light with my pen then the oranges as well again super light and then the yellow you can maybe sort of add in a lot more color for it like so and that's really started to add a nice underglow to the fish, which I think always looks really cool. You don't necessarily need to add anything up towards the top. And I'm just gonna quickly just add in a little bit more pink because I feel like that could just pop a bit more, like so. So now what we've got is a lovely little underglow to the fish. And we're gonna repeat this process for any layers we wanna go in, add some extra color to, and just make them pop just that little bit more and it's essentially adding in the highlights and where they should live. So we're going to go to this fin here now. We're going to go to find it, which is this one here. And this one just needs punching up a little bit more. So again, underneath that layer, we're going to create a new one. We're going to use the original fin that we created, the shape for it, tap on it and use the option select. 
to select the shape of it. Go to the new layer we created and use the option mask, like so. And then just unselect the select option. Make sure you're on layer, the layer underneath the mask. And same process, just using the same outline colors you used so it matches up. Just, just very lightly with the airbrush, make the brush smaller. So sort of build those colours up a bit more. And likewise the pinks up here are a bit more punchy. Like so. But you don't want to do too much. Just a little bit extra will really help it sort of pop a bit more. And you can go to... I added a little bit of red on this edge. And I can just add in a little bit more like that. And because this layer is the closest one to us, we can add a little bit more if we wanted to. Like so. Now I'm going to go into the tail, which is where we can add a lot more uh, colour to it. And then that will should finish off the design nicely. So we're going to go back to our layers and select the very bottom layer, which is this one here. And I always turn them on and off so I can work out where that layer is. And again, underneath that layer, tap on the plus using the shape that we created before. Tap on it and use the option select to select that shape size. And then go to the new layer we created and use the option mask and then make sure you turn off the selection, go to the layer underneath the mask so we're drawing in the right place, and then just go in and start adding your colors. You can add in what you wish at this point. I'm gonna grab some more purple because the outer edge of this is quite purple and make my brush size around about 25% and just flush out that color a little bit more. And I want all my lighting now to come somewhat towards the bottom. So then the only other part I'm going to do is add in some pink up here. And I think adding these last little extra bits here really help these layers to sort of stand out from one another. Because this layer here, we're probably not going to add too much to it, but this one here can be a lot more punchy as it is. And then the only thing I kind of want to do is just add in a bit of yellow up here to sort of blend this in a little bit more, like so. I think that looks really nice, blends in that sort of very vibrant colour. Again, at this point, our designs might all look quite different to one another. So yours might not have this little yellow touch here, but I've got it. So I'm just going to try and sort of diffuse that little edge a little bit more. And then we want to now, I want to now work on this one here. So we're going to go to our layers. We're going to, that's the one we just used. So it's not that one. If we go to the next one, it's that one. So underneath it we create a new layer we select the shape of the original shape we created by tapping on it and selecting select we go to the new layer we created tap on that and use the option mask and then undo the selection and make sure you're tapped on not the mask but the layer itself same process just add in those extra colors where you want them i want the purple a little bit more and a little bit of the pink, but not a great deal. And you'll notice I'm actually only gonna add it in on this top edge as well, like so. I'm not gonna add in too much to this one, maybe a little bit more purple under here, but I don't want this to pop through like that too much because then you start to get a really different effect. And that's that one. So all I added there was a bit of pink and a bit of purple on this edge. And then I'm going to go to my layers. And now I know where the last fin is, which is there. Again, go underneath that layer, onto the shape, tap the plus. Then go to the layer of the shape that we created before. Use the option select. Then go to layer 23. And then tap on the option mask. And then make sure you tap on the layer and turn off the selection. And the same, I'm just going to add in a little bit of purple there, a little bit of pink, a little bit of red, and maybe a little bit of yellow, like that, just on that edge. And now if we zoom out, that's it. That's the full design from start to finish. You could go in and add even more if you wish, maybe more highlights and make things more prominent, but as far as we'll go today, that is my finished design. This design took a little bit longer than normal. There was also a lot of creation of masks, selections, and it could be quite confusing. Don't worry if you didn't understand it, go back, rewatch it, and maybe try and create it a second time, and then 
things will start to fall in place as we go forward. But thank you if you did manage to stay around this whole time towards the end of this design. Like I said, it was a little bit longer, but I'm really glad we eventually got around to doing it and showing off what is actually a really cool effect. It just takes a little bit longer to create. So as always, please, please, please tag me in your creations, add them to your story and tag me on Instagram, joel.create, and I'll repost them to my own story. Also, if you do them and say recorded them for TikTok, again, mention me in it. I'll happily go and uh, take a look, drop a comment and share some love. But as always, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please like the video as well as also drop a comment below to let me know how you got on. If you have any comments or questions, you know, again, please pop them in the comments below. I'll be sure to answer them as promptly as I can. But otherwise, I'll stay tuned for all your designs coming my way in the next couple of days on Instagram.